I've been threatened. Oh, you have been? Uh, I've been threatened by, um, I worked a case where this guy uh, was an older guy, super nice guy. He had a younger girlfriend and he, he owned a business in Phoenix, but he was going back and forth, lived, had, had a rental in Laguna Beach. And mm -hmm. He just wouldn't believe that this, his girlfriend, he had a feeling that she was, she was kind of being unfaithful. And so I followed her around and saw her ex-boyfriend you know, living, basically, I've caught her, the ex-boyfriend, living with her, okay. you know? And so I referred all this stuff back to him. I mean, I did mobile surveillance, I mean, a stationary surveillance for 24 hours, so yeah. she caught on eventually, and of course, him being the love-stricken guy, he, he broke down and told her, oh yeah, well, I've had a PI. And so that blows my cover, and yeah. then she threatens that she's gonna sue me for stalking her, and she's going to have my license. Well, I did, not, I did nothing legal. Welcome, Casey, to the studio. Um, we worked together like four years ago. Very fascinated with what you do. Um, it's very interesting. Um, well, welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So, so Casey, um, you do something very unique. Um, you do uh, private investigations. Correct. Uh, and your company is ha uh, Hallahan uh, Investigations. Yes. Um, what, what exactly do you do? Just in very short, like what, what exactly do you do? Well, that's, an, that's, that's kind of a twisted question. I mean, every type of investigation we pretty much do. Uh, lately, it, it's, I mean, where we live, it's a lot of uh, infidelities, oh. child custody cases like that. It's uh, rampant in our area. So, so how, how long have you been doing this? Well, I mean, are we going back to when I was Just, a little kid? I mean, yeah. my dad was an investigator. Oh, so, so this is going back generation then? Y yeah, I mean, I, not my whole life, but my, when I was a kid, my dad was a private investigator. He worked oh. for the state of California and was a, a fraud investigator and then opened his own practice. And then when I was a teenager, he'd just send me out with a, with a notepad, not even a camera or anything, and just tell, tell me who's, who came and goes. And so so he, would, he would just drop you off and say, hey, watch this house? Like, what, what would he say to you? Yeah, I mean, I was driving at that time. Oh, but okay. yeah, he would drop, tell me to, where to go. And I mean, back then it was the Thomas Guides, yeah. you know? And so <laughs> tell you how long ago it was. And uh, I mean, write down, you know, the description of people that would come and go from the house. Uh, any vehicles, anything that happened. So, so, so you were seeing your dad doing this as a kid too, right? So, correct. What, what, what did you think about your dad doing this? Did you think, man, my dad's doing a cool job? Is oh, it? I mean, I used to brag about it. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> my friends were like all, all enthralled with it, so it was really cool. So, so okay, so, so, so you've seen your dad doing it. Your dad is getting you kind of into it, and after seeing this and obviously being excited about what your dad was doing, is this when you said, hey, I, this is something that I want to do? Like, I could see myself doing this? I, I wish I would have done that, yes. But I, it didn't work, work out that way, no. I, 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 I just kind of got lost in the shuffle. I, I just continued with school. I didn't really think that that's what I was going to do. Didn't really know what I was going to do. And I've, I've done pretty much everything under yeah. the sun. Um, what happened was is that my dad passed early in when I was young. Sorry to hear that. Um, and so... You know, later in life, I was married, and I was just kind of, I had a couple jobs that I just wasn't interested in, and I just happened to, this was back when Craigslist was big, yeah. for, for jobs and stuff, and I just read it, and I thought, hey, yeah, my dad, my dad was an investigator, I kind of have that, and so I, and, uh, I applied, and they came in for an interview, and boom, she told me right there that you're it. I was really surprised. So, so, so you were doing this for someone else then? I was working for another company. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so you, when you first start out, you have to have hours to get in to, to be an actual private investigator. What, what, what do you mean hours? Well, you have to, you have to work for a company, okay. and, and then you log your hours. I mean, in California, it's 6,000 hours. Wow, I did not even know there was that much background involved. I, I didn't realize it was that deep. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. And then, so I, I also had a degree. I got my, my degree in, in criminal justice, so that, like, takes off like a thousand or two thousand hours or something anyway so I worked for this company and uh, you're kind of umbrellaed under them and they uh, they they pretty much trained me but it was just instinct to tell you the truth so, so, so now are you so while you're going to this company are you thinking about like obviously your dad being a part of this um, like I, I, this is really like uh, in your soul you're saying man this is me you, you know, I, I, at first I wasn't sure, but I'll, I'll tell you a little a little story. At first, when I it was I, it's actually a workers' comp. We all we did was workers' comp okay. stuff, 
And uh, I was working with the guy because I was just, you, you train with the guy for the first couple of weeks. And my first assignment we call a med. Okay. And so we don't know anything. We just know this guy's good. We don't know what he looks like. You know, we have a brief description, no vehicle. Um, and so we're, we're waiting at this, this medical appointment so we can watch him go in and then we can tell him home and yeah. see where he lives and then follow his activities. Yeah. Uh, and so I was with another guy, a seasoned guy, been, been doing that for 30 years. Yeah. And I saw this guy pull up and I just got that feeling. And I go, I think that's him right there. And he's like, what? Dude. He's too early. And I said, I got that feeling. He goes, well, just go follow it. Yeah. Follow him and see if he goes into the appointment. Followed him in, sat down there, blended in with all the rest of the people. And they called his name. Wow. And I walked out and I came down. And I felt like this is it. This is my calling. It's a win. I, I told the guy, and he's like, man, that, you've got it. It's in your blood. <laughs> I said, what do you It's in think? your blood. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, it was it was a pretty pretty fascinating I, and I, there from there on i was hooked so okay so okay so like so the work is comp right mm -hmm. so so that's kind of really how me and you got introduced right uh because obviously i had someone doing a fraudulent claim to me right and um so so really i just gave you a name uh, an address and then you you literally just started and the information you gave me was pretty mind-blowing mm -hmm. um i was surprised that you found her so quickly uh, you found out where she was working uh, because obviously she was saying that she had nerve injuries and uh, a lot of physical stuff. Right. But you literally caught her tying her son's shoelace, which blew my mind because you were in this. So the video you sent me was like uh, she was tying her son's shoelace or something in a store. Right. And then she was putting groceries in her car in the back seat. Yes, I remember. A a and um, obviously her work was starting at roughly at four o'clock in the morning. Right. So, you, yeah, the fact that you caught that, I thought was pretty impressive. Well, it, you know, when you've worked in the, the, the workers' comp for so long, I mean, there's just little things that you know. And now now that I'm a licensed investigator, I, I'm not getting my information handed to me. I, I have my own database. I can look up things myself and do my own research. So before I even go out and do surveillance, I'm kind of doing a background, you know, of what this person's like, see okay. what they have, you know, if I can find a vehicle. Yeah. And then I can also run the plates right when I get there. So, no. so, so, are you are you um like do you like obviously you're getting so close and doing things to people, right? Are you dressing up in disguises? Like, how, how is it? Yeah, no, I. <laughs> do you have a room full of like different wigs and stuff? No, no. I, funny you say that. I, there was a guy that I worked in workers comp, and, and he had no tinted windows, which is kind of he just started, and that's kind of the no no. Okay. Right. And he would put on a hat and a wig and he looked so funny. And the rest <laughs> of us are in our tin windows, just in our regular clothes. And yeah. we just kept this guy's a, this guy's funny. So but yeah, no, we don't I, No, You the thing is, when you're an investigator or you're doing that, you're blending in. Got you it. just got to blend in with the rest of them. That's kind of why I have a, a longer goatee so I can kind of hang out with the, the upper yeah. you know, class. But then also if I got to go into the hood, you know, I can try and blend in as much as I can, you know. So, so okay so so like do you do people are people suspecting you so like let's just say like you were following this lady for me right obviously mm -hmm. obviously with these fraudulent claims but like is anybody suspecting you because this is like four o'clock in the morning five o'clock uh, are, are they suspecting you or do you feel like someone's watching like do you do you ever get that like sense sometimes you, you have to have a sense okay. you, you know we call it getting burned and and what it is is that I mean, the more that you do it, the more that you, you, you know, just like with anything, you get really good. I mean, you don't, you know, like if it's four in the morning, she turns her car on. You're not going to immediately turn your car on, turn the lights on. She's like, oh, there's another car. You know, so you just kind of you have to learn the little things to, you, you know, to incorporate your, your, your surveillance so you're not you know, being detected. Got have on. I gotten burned before? We all have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's not it's not it's not pretty when you do. What, you know, I've what? had people have confrontations with me and. You know, it's it's not fun. So 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 when, when somebody like when you when you get burned, does is somebody um, like how do you react to that? Do you do you just try to play it off, or are you like do you just say, hey I'm just doing my job? Like how, what do you do when someone burns you? Well, if, if they it, come up to you, it definitely it definitely depends on. I mean, if you're if you're getting burned when you're in, in when you're exposed inside you know outside of your vehicle, if you're in your vehicle, you just take off. You just you, you know I've had people follow me for a while, and I just and then they get bored. Okay. You know, or you, you know, if you know how to drive a, a car pretty good. I mean, I can lose someone pretty easily. Now, okay. You know, you're in your car a lot. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, I've never really had anybody approach me outside of my vehicle where I was because it's a lot easier to blend in when you're if they're like in a Target or a Costco because there's a lot of people. But um, never really had and I'm not the smallest of guys. I'm not huge, but I'm not, I mean, I've never really had anybody come 
Yeah. But I've been in the hood and I've I've had guns pulled on me. Oh and, wow. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've I've been threatened. I mean, it's like you you don't engage at all. You just get out of there. Okay, so okay, so this uh, like um like the the, the getting burned, right? And uh, so I'm going back to this because I find sure. it very fascinating on on your reaction to this. Right. So so uh, someone's burned you. Um uh, you you try to get out of there, you try to blend in when it's face do they see you a second time? Because this person's obviously seen you. Do you give up on the case or do you go back a month later? Good question. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it is very relevant to your case. I mean, uh, if it's my personal case, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I try and find, you know, another investigator, okay. another vehicle, I, and I, you don't go back the next day. I thought this is when the when the wigs start coming on. Oh, no. <laughs> I guess you probably could, you know. You might, you, you know, but I, 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 I think... It's more of the vehicle, I think. Okay. Um, most of the times, that's how we get burned. They see this vehicle time and time. I mean, we go everywhere. You have to be really, you know, I mean, I've had people work for me, and they've tried to do this tailing yeah. uh, while during mobile surveillance, and it's they're just not good at it. Well, you know, you have it's an art. And then, but if you get if you get burned, you just you, you don't go back to the case the next day, even if you have a different vehicle. I mean, yeah. you, you you give it a, a time to just rest. Yeah. And then you go back out and, and let them, you know, think maybe they're crazy or something. <laughs> so, so, okay, so, so you were going to school for criminal justice, right? Mm-hmm. Did you think that this was going to, like, obviously, like, I don't think you planned, but when you were doing criminal justice, what did you think you were going to be? Um, I, I didn't really know, to tell you the truth. I, re- I really, I wanted to get into some type of law enforcement. Unfortunately, when I, when I did get my degree, I was in my late 30s. Okay. You know, you, you can't just become a cop anymore. I mean, yeah. they just don't want you. You're too old in their eyes Yeah. Um, and things like that. So I just kind of looked around and then it just, as I said, I, I just, I come across that, yeah. that ad and I thought, well, you know, my dad did it and, you know, I can do this. So, <clears throat> okay. So on your investigations, and so I know I'm jumping around different topics, yeah, right? Sure. I think it's a very exciting uh, career path you've taken. Like oh, it's, yeah. uh, it's like a, every, every dream of someone saying, hey, let me be the, the right. spy. <laughs> right. Well, don't get, you know, I mean, it's not that glorified. I mean, it's, it's fun at times, definitely. But yeah. I mean, and any investigator will attest that, it, I mean, there are hours that you put in sitting in your vehicle and sweating and tired and you know whatever and it's just you don't I mean, a lot of it is waiting around waiting for people yeah you know so so okay so somebody called you like me right so i've, I've called you and uh giving you the details you start off turning up at their place i presume or do you start looking at technology first like you go to the the computer you pull all Straight this stuff. technology first technology first you, you, and that's what i do i, I don't okay. know i can't attest for other people but i mean i, I you have to I mean, I, want, I don't want to go. I mean, I go as far as I'll, I'll, you have to go on Google Maps before I even okay. go out. So I know the layout. When I, I'm not getting there trying to find a spot and where their house is and looking at the numbers. I already know what their place is, yeah. their residence. I, you know, so you you have to do your, your due diligence prior. So are, are you running uh, the, the license plates too? So like if people give you license plates, do you run the license plates or oh, sure. IDs? Sure. And, and what sort of information do you do you look for when you're getting that? On the license plate, or just in general? Um, just in general, like you said, so like let's just say there's a, a fidelity case going on. You, they've given you the uh, the person's picture, and here's his ID. Like, what, what would they give you? And uh, what, what what sort of information are you pulling, or what you're looking for with like a license plate or an ID? Well, yeah, yeah, first I would be social media. Okay. Key. Okay. Key. I, I, every investigator uses social media these days. It's it's it is such a godsend to us because we can get pictures, we can get possible vehicles that they've been okay. associates that they've been with you know they all oh, their activity level what what they're into and stuff like that um I, i've been on every case from people being on boats to i mean everything you you, you think of it we've done it and so you kind of you kind of gotta you know be prepared for that yeah i mean you kind of go and i mean i've one case i had a while ago the guy was a huge golfer I've yeah. never golfed in my life. <laughs> I've swung a couple of balls, you know, but I've never really golfed. Yeah. So I started to kind of go, okay, well, if I've got to get into that, you know, where do I get some? So I went and bought some cheap clubs, yeah, you know, and just have those there. I mean, I've been on the beach where I was, you know, sunning and, and I've got a beach chair and yeah. things like that. So you kind of, you know, adapt to whatever their, their goings, their activity levels are. So, so what was the most, um, like, intense uh, case that you've been on like some, what was the most like you say man this was a th- th- this was a snake one this was a dangerous one what was one that really stood out in your mind like you said man this was one that never left me 
I try and keep it G rated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's not money X rated. Oh, yeah. They'll tell you the truth. It's uh, it's it's hard to say. I, I mean, every case is so different. Um, I, I worked on a case. I won't give any names because okay. it's yep. you know I can't. I understand. Um, but he was a. We were hired by a billionaire, and he was in South Orange County, and he fought. He was getting divorced with his wife, and he literally hired me, and I got together a team, and we worked on his ex-wife's supposed boyfriend, his right. house. And we sat in front of his house 24-7 for eight months. Wow. Yeah. And it was intense. So the thing was that what really was diverse about it is that he eventually saw that we, he, he caught on to us. And all we were doing was kind of watching his activities when he was coming and going. We weren't following him. We were watching his activities. And I think our client really just wanted to, to mess with him. Yeah. And so um, he, the, the ex-wife would come. She'd pound on our windows, you know, threaten wow. us. The guy would come over and threaten us, flip us off, throw eggs at our cars. Wow. And so the cops got called several times. And we, every, time we, every time we would show up to the guy, would, we would, one guy's breaking his end of the, his day and another yeah. guy would come in. We call what's called a code five. Yeah. And that's just calling the, the, the police department to let them know we're out there. We're going to be out and they, they, okay, wait, let me get your name. You're with who, what, you know, what company you're with. Okay. What's your vehicle? What's your plate number? So they know that if they get called, they're like, okay, that's him. So, so, so you're already calling the police and notifying them that you're there. So you for sure. Do that? Wow. For sure. Yeah, you, you, the last thing you want to do is, is, is uh, kind of piss off the police. I mean, they okay. they got their own job. They don't need to come out and, and deal with us. Where does the law come into this? Like, obviously, I would think that there would be some laws where people are saying, "Hey, he's follow like stalking, stalking me." And you, biggest biggest misnomer. <laughs> I mean, stalking. We're not stalking. We're not following him. We're sitting there and we're on a public street. Yeah. And we can do whatever we want on a public street. I mean, within reason, obviously. But I mean, we're just sitting there. Has Has anybody ever called the police on you as a stalker? <laughs> Uh, I've been threatened. Are you happy? Uh, I've been threatened by, um, I worked a case where this guy, uh, was an older guy, super nice guy, he had a younger girlfriend and he, he owned a business in Phoenix, but he was going back and forth, he lived, had, had a rental in Laguna beach. And yeah. he just wouldn't believe that this, his girlfriend, he had a feeling that she was, she was kind of being unfaithful. And so I followed her around and saw her ex-boyfriend you know, living, basically, I've caught her, the ex-boyfriend, living with her, okay. you know? And so I referred all this stuff back to him. I mean, I did mobile surveillance. I mean, a stationary surveillance for 24 hours. So yeah. she caught on eventually. And, of course, him being the love-stricken guy, he, he broke down and told her, oh, yeah, well, I've had a PI. And so that blows my cover. And yeah. then she threatens that she's going to sue me for stalking her. And she's going to have my license. Well, I had did not, I have did nothing illegal. Yeah. I mean, you the stalker thing is such a. It's a weird thing. It's a yeah. very. People think that just because you're following them, I and mean, if you're in a public place, you know, and if you're not bothering them, you're just yeah. observing. That's the biggest thing for an investigator is you just observe. What yeah. you can't dictate what they're going to do. You observe and, and you just let them go about their business. And you think you can't go into private property. You can't do things like that. You just let them do and you're just observing. How, how emotional, like emotionally connected do you get to some of these cases? Because some of the stuff, like there must be people crying to you and saying, please help me or oh. I'm being sued through the teeth. Like how emotional do you get and how, how does that affect you? Uh, a, a lot. It's funny. It's not a question that gets asked very much, but that's a, that's a really good question because I deal with a lot of infidelities and a lot of yeah. child custody issues. I can so uh, during that, it's you become like a therapist. I'll, I'll be honest. Even <laughs> the guy that I told you that you know his girlfriend, she, Casey, you know, he, he became like a friend to me. Yeah. I don't know what to do, and, and I said, listen, my professional <clears throat> opinion is that you need to separate yourself. And so you have to stay strong. Thankfully, I have, I mean, I have a great marriage. I mean, I, I have a, a great support system. Yeah. And so it kind of, that helps me as well. But yeah, I mean, when it, when it comes to kids and, and, and it, hard, it gets hard. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of times is, I mean, I've been in tears because I just don't want those, these, these kids to go through, you know, the divorce that these, yeah. these parents it's are tough. doing. Yeah. 
So, 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 like, so when, when people are cr- coming to you, right, and so like th- they're crying to you, and uh, obviously there's there's a service with this too, right? Because a lot of people can't just afford uh, want you to do the service, right? Do do you try to give them a break? Uh, because obviously there's a cost associated, your time, your effort, the problems that sure. potentially can cost you. But you see someone crying to you and saying, hey, please help me, please help me. I'm desperate, I'm desperate. Do you I'm have human. That? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm human. You know, I mean, of course, I think, and that's, I think that's what you get when you get a smaller mom and pop thing with us. Yeah. Is that, I mean, I do my own investigations. I have people that help me. But I mean, I'm the, I'm the one that's doing it. And I'm not the one that's, you know, they call, I mean, a lot of firms, you call them up, they get, you get a free 30-minute consultation. Yeah. I'm not like that. I mean, tell me what you got, you know, let's work this out. You know, I mean, I know I'm probably never going to be a millionaire from this, but I like what I do. Yeah. And that's pretty important, you know. And you're helping people, right? And you're helping people for yeah. sure. Um, so <clears throat> with the support, right, so you, you mentioned family and stuff. So obviously you're out late at night. How, how, how does that play a toll on family life? Because you, you could be sitting there because even with our case, um, you were there most nights. Um seeing when this lady was going to come, when she wasn't going to come. Obviously, it took time for you even to figure out and, and have results, and which you right. which you pulled off. So how, how does that affect your, your family life and the time that goes into this? Well, you think it would be pretty bad. My, my wife is, she's outstanding. I mean, she she understands, I mean, she's she's had to. Yeah. You know, I mean, she's had to deal with it. And she, you know, thankfully she understands it. Hey, just do what you got to do. She, and, and the trust factor, I think yeah. that, I mean, she doesn't know where I'm going it you know, three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you know, she, I could be out seeing another person yeah. or whatever, but no, she, it, it, she it, might have a guy following you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the counter surveillance here, you know? So yeah, I mean, the, the, in my kids, I mean, I have, I have two that are 10 years apart. Yeah. My oldest is already out. He grew up with me doing it. And oh, he my, was involved in it too. I mean, did you have him do a few case? Like, um, actually when he got older, I have, I've had him do some cases wow. for me and you know, just little runs about like, hey, drive by here and, you know, see what you see. And it, it's good for that actually to get off topic. It's good to have people in different cities. Then you don't have to always drive down there. Yes. I, I mean, I've, I've had cases in, in San Diego where I just call my son up and I say, hey, can you do a drive by real quick and see if this person's there? He's like, yeah, I go, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you the, the hour or whatever, we, you know, whatever your gas is and stuff. Yeah. So it's beneficial yes. for sure. But back to the. Back to the family thing, I mean, they just, I mean, I don't think they know anything different. I mean, it's, I've been doing this for forever, so it's, you know, they, now they know it's, that's the way dad is. Wow. Because you know? I would think that they would be a little worried too, right? Because anything can happen while you're out. When my son, my youngest son, when he was little, he worried a lot. Okay. Yeah, and I, and now he's, he knows. He's actually been on a couple with me. <laughs> So, so he's knows. getting the same, um, same generational training, right? Right, right. <laughs> Early on, yeah, earlier. Um, it's good. I, I just yes. tell him, Hey, if you, you know, if this is what you want to do, then you got to start, start practicing now. Yes. It's definitely an art. So, so, okay. So, so now back to technology, right? So are you like, are, are you wearing like, like to the recordings that you got me, like, I can't figure out how you got them. Were you wearing like spy glasses or something? Like, oh yeah, we call them, yeah. Co- covert cameras. So, you know, there's all sorts of them. Okay. I mean, I, yeah, I think. I think I wore the glasses on yours. If not, I, there's like key, we have keychain cameras. Oh, okay. I mean, they have the buttons that you can put right here, and there's so there's all sorts of things. It's, you know, when I first started, I was really awkward to go out because I thought everybody knew. Yeah. They know. They know. I'm. You know. I'm so following. You're, you're them. paranoid. You you have to get past that. It was. It took. It takes. You know. Everybody has to go through that period. But after you do, then you just walk in, and it's like you don't. You don't care. You know, so, so how was it on your first case then? So, you know, you said that you were paranoid on your first case. Um, how, how did you um, how did you get over that? Or the, the paranoid? Did you make eye contact or what, 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 what did you did you mess up at all? <laughs> not that I know of, you know, I mean, not that you nobody told me. Yeah, I mean, that, nothing, nobody told me that I did. But uh, funny you say, because back then we didn't have the covert cameras. Mm. We were using the big eight millimeter cameras and we had to put them in a little fanny pack. Is and, yeah, and you know, poke a hole through it. It was so awkward. It was so awkward. That that's why it was like you, you know. I mean, you're a guy like me wearing a fanny pack. Come on, you, you know? didn't say I'm a tourist from 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 France or something. Right, right, exactly. I should have dressed the part a little bit better. But yeah, it was it was awkward. But now it's it's so much easier. You so, know? so so was there ever a mistake that you felt like you made though while you were out? Did you ever feel like you made a mistake? Like you go, oh man, this guy got me, and now all of a sudden like you. you 
you, you know it's a mistake and now the paranoia is kicking in. Did you, did you ever have that situation? You kind of do, but then you play it out and then you know, it happens It happens quite a bit. You know, you don't know because you're trying to, you know, you're riding that, that fine line. Yeah. You don't know if, if you know, he's, he's on to you or if it's just that's the way he is. People's behaviors, I mean, I'll tell you, if you just try it one time going on surveillance and, and see people's behaviors, you'd be astonished. I mean, just the way they do weird things. It, it just like I, I think about what I do. Like when I go to the grocery store, I go to the grocery store, I, I park, I get out, you know, I just go in, get my stuff, I get in my truck. You don't know, pay my attention car. to anybody. Huh? Like you don't pay attention to anybody, right? right. We're just like oblivious. And these other people, they'll like hang out in their car for half an hour. Do they really? Oh my gosh. You know, I'm like, what are they doing? And they're not on their phone. They're just sitting there. And just, what? I don't, I mean, it, people's actions are odd a lot. People are weird. You'll wow. find that out. So, so yeah, you and, and you must be learning a yeah. You really must learn a lot about people's behaviors, right? You do. And, and going back to what you're saying is that you can't even if, say you're, you know, you know the person sitting in their car for half an hour. You're like, oh, and it starts going in your head. Oh, they're on to me. They're on. You got to fight that. Wow. And then you'll get out, and they'll be they're not even looking around, and you'll wow. just go on your day, and you're like, so you kind of have to fight that a little bit, and and just. I guess just relax. That's yeah. the best thing I could say because when you're first starting, you you know, when I was a rookie, it was like, I want to get them right now. Yeah. And the guys were like, let them just go. Just relax. Yeah. They're not on to you. So so, so do, you, do you feel like your intuition, like, you know, you mentioned intuition once, like you, you knew it was the guy, you had that hunch. When, when did you realize that you're trusting more in your intuition? I mean, just as more time that you put on the job, I mean, it gets greater and greater. I mean, it, you know, everybody talks about their gut feeling and that's, yeah. that is so relevant in our, in our, you know, industry, yeah. you, you have to, you, you have to go with your gut. Um, and if you make these rash decisions, let it play out. If they, if you get burned, you get burned. If you think you're going to get burned, then they pull back a little bit. Wow. So, so it's, yeah, your, your gut instinct, your intuition and your gut instinct is, is key. So. I'm gonna go back a little. So, so when you turn this into a business, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that's a that's a challenging thing for for most people, mm -hmm. right? So, you you trusting that you're doing something right? Can you make enough from this? So, there's a lot of stuff that goes in just to the forget the, um, the the, the job portion of it, but the business a aspect of it, where you're turning it into a business. Where did you feel like you had the confidence to do it? When, when did that come into you saying, oh, yeah, you know what? I can definitely do it. I see other people doing this. Where, where, where did that come from? I, I mean, way before I even started. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was let me let me go. I, I mean, it, I, I felt when I worked for the company, I, we were just doing workers comp. We weren't really. How do I say this without <laughs> if there's no worker comp investigators out there? <laughs> you feel more as like I call it like a video jockey. Okay. You, you know, they, because they're doing all the type of research for you and then giving it to you. And then when they gave it to me, I didn't have a whole lot. I would do my own, you know, go okay. back on social media and stuff. Even though the company, they have people that do that for you. I still was doing that kind of trying to figure it out. And I thought, well, you know, if they're doing this, I, I, I can do this. You know, and it wasn't just workers comp. You know, as a, again, you're, you're like, I can do this because I have that yeah. that internal instinct. I, you know, I. I I don't need to be told just to go follow this guy around. I mean, I, I know how to do this. And yeah. so, yeah, right away. I mean, I think the h hardest thing was that having a support system that financially, Yeah. Y you know, I mean, my wife, thank God that she's got a, a really good job and, and she kind of supported me this. And she knew, I mean, it was like, it wasn't even like we had to sit down and, and say, Hey, this is uh, something I'm looking at. She, she pushed me the whole way. So oh so she was she was encouraging you to oh, say, sure. hey, just get this thing off the ground for sure this is you so she told she was encouraging me all the way through when I was when I was just working for a company as, as a, a you know a surveillance investigator she said you need to do your own you you've got this you, you, you know it's in your blood but but you were accumulating hours at that time right correct and then, and then so so did you have to research the hour thing because I would never have even believed this hour thing I, I wouldn't have ever thought that right but did, like how did you know you needed hours. Like, how did you know? Oh, wow! So, so if we're doing this, there's there's a there's a way to do this versus a guy just being a a guy that hey, I'll follow someone for like twenty bucks, whatever it is. Right. But how did you know that you had to do to get these these credentials? Oh, you just look it up. I mean, you go to the state of California. It's it's we're governed under the the BSIS. It's the Bureau of Security and Investigation Services. So, it, it give you all your. I I was already I had already surpassed my six thousand hours. I mean, I, I had done. I think 12 years as an, oh. a, as a surveillance investigator. 
Wow. Yeah. And before I started my own and then, you know, I just went, I branched out. I had to get out and do it and, and, and bite the bullet. Yeah. Were you nervous? Like, I, I, even though like you were ready to go, but like, so obviously there's, there's trying to find the clients and stuff because obviously there's a marketing portion to this and trying to understand, okay, I, there's, I know there's people who, who are looking for you. Were you nervous on like trying to get new clients in, in the beginning when you oh, were? Oh, for sure. Uh, uh, for sure. I mean, that's, that's uh, with any that's business. the entrepreneurial part trying, of you. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the, the hardest part is that me not knowing, um, I mean, I know I have to get a, a database, yeah. you know, but what am I looking for? And then when I got a database, I wasn't sure, like, exactly how to work it. A, a, a database for what? So you have to get a database for? Well, for information, oh, backgrounds oh, okay, okay. and things like that on everybody. So you, you, have to, you have to sign up to for different companies and they have to review you and approve you and see that you have your license and everything before they'll, they'll let you use it. And you can't, just not anybody in the public can, can access that. Um, and so... You know, I had to re research what, which one I was going to use. How, and and the, the hardest thing was that, how do I turn this into information for me that I can use? Yeah. You know, nobody, there's no training guy that's sitting there right there going, hey, no, no, you, you got to do this. You, you, it's a lot of you just trial and error, yeah. you know, and you, and you learn. And you've got to absorb things quickly because it's, it's, uh, it's something that is unique. Like, I, I, I equate it to, like, someone who's, when you first get your, you know, like information, it's not like you just you type some person's name in and then in our database and then boom, all yeah. of a sudden it gives you all the information. You, you have to work it, you know, different angles and how to, how to OK, well, maybe the, this isn't their full name or, or, you know, there's this isn't their correct date of birth or there's a lot of things. And, and you, you know, it doesn't just give you all the databases don't just give you. First of all, they don't give you criminal. Yeah. But I mean, they'll give you court dates, I mean, court, you know, stuff that they've been to court and, you know, convicted, but not all. Wow. And so one of the things that I say is that, okay, you go from there, then you'd look at different counties that that person's lived in, you know, and then you can go to their direct, you know, uh, court site. Right. And a lot of them you have to pay for, you know, and then you, you research, you know, go back as far as you can and, and see if they have any, any, you know, anything in their courts, you know. So, so like, you, you know how you, you use other investigators with you? Like, so, so do you, so like with this network of people that you have, right? So obviously the, the bigger the case, like you said, you know, you had, you, you brought cases together where you've brought people together. Mm -hmm. So like, what, what about that network? Do you, do you call like other agencies or is it people, you know, cause obviously it sounds like you're forming a, 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 a bigger network. Correct. Yeah. I, I'm a part of an organization called Cali. Okay. It's the California Association of Licensed Investigators. Oh. It's, it's the biggest organization in California. I didn't know that um, existed either. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I tell you, okay. I mean, that was, and I knew about that kind of prior to me even getting my license. So I knew I, when I got my license, I mean, that was the first thing I got pretty much was just joining their organization um, because I needed, I needed other people to kind of, you know, ask questions. They have a, a they're really a, a great organization. They have uh, on there what's called a, a, a listserv. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar or anything N like not that. Not familiar. So when you join, when you join their organization, you, you can post anything like there's, um, it goes out to everybody, all the members, Oh, okay. you know, through all the state of California, even people, there's people outside of state of California that, that are members of Cali and you can, they, they have jobs on there all the time. Hey, you know what? I'm looking for an investigator in, in Aliso Viejo and it's this case and it's charged, you know, this is what the case is and it'll blast it out. And then people will just email, Hey, I can, I can take care of that for you. And, oh. So, but also the great thing about that, I mean, it's good that ha you have a, a source of income, Yeah. Um, but you can ask questions. If, you, if you're not sure about something and nobody's, there's, there's such a great group of people that you just, yeah. you post, hey, I'm not sure, like, if this is legal or what do I do? Does anybody, or I don't do this kind of case, can, I can pass it to you guys or, and it's just a community. And, you know, people respond right away and they're so helpful. It's awesome. Did, did you ever have to um, like like have an investigation that you actually left the state or you had to follow someone out of state? Did, it, did that ever happen? And how does that affect when you're a, a California licensed person? Like uh, I'm just trying to because obviously mm -hmm. the, the licensing for me is um, uh, like fairly new. Like I didn't understand how that worked. Right. But, but how, how would that play in? Well, how uh, I did when I wasn't. Then I didn't have my own company. I worked for a company doing workers comp, but they were, they were thankfully like, we followed a guy from, I think it was Fullerton or Placentia and he went to Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we stayed in Vegas all weekend. Now, you think of oh, fun times? No, 
<laughs> not, not not fun at all. I mean, you're just watching the guy all the time gambling, and it's but yeah. To 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 go back to your question is that no, you have to. I would stop it right now because I'm trying actually to get my my license in Nevada. Oh, okay. It's pretty extensive. So, so, so no, why why do you have your eye on Nevada right now? Um, I have a couple contacts there to to revenue for some revenue, and um, I, I mean I think you broaden your horizons. You know things are going to come. So is is it a common ground though? Obviously California being close to to driving. No, those not at all. Okay, so it's and not- you, you, there's some what do you call reciprocity, reciprocity, mm-hmm. where they have the same that you can go in to their state and we have the same law. No. They don't. We don't have that with Nevada at all. In fact, I uh, learning is that Nevada's like one of the toughest. Is it really? Yeah, that that we know of. Yeah, to get. I mean, they just they go through your financials, everything. They want to wow. see my 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 taxes. They want to see everything before. I, I would have thought Nevada would have been more free than everybody else. Seeing as so, everybody's right? gambling over there and I know. Uh, and, and, and like California. Crazy. You know, California is a pretty strict state. You yes. Know? No, they're way farther. You know. And, and I guess they're just trying to limit the amount of, of fraud maybe in, in their state of, you know, people pretending to be an investigator and whatever um, and, and easy to get in. So, so you said like uh, right now the, the most common cases that you get are uh, like fidelity cases, right? Yeah, it, it, it fluctuates, infidelity. but yeah, that's pretty much infidelity. So, 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 so now with those type of cases, um, <clears throat> like... Uh, what sort? What sort of? Uh, how does somebody approach you? Like, or is it is it mainly men? Is it women? Like, who who who's normally approaching you? I mean, I get both, but I, I mean, I would if we had to put it on a scale. I mean, definitely more women than men. More women than chasing the husbands. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, it, unfortunately, that's that's it. And and you know, from what I read, I, I think in Orange County alone, the divorce rate is like seventy eight percent. Oh wow! So you can you know figure that that's obviously you know some infidelity going on so, so so like when these women are calling you or i'm, I'm going to base it on women it could be either sure. men or women but but like when a woman's calling you like so sh- uh, is it hard for them to talk to you i mean do they like say hey i want you to follow my husband or i want you to like is it is it difficult like for them to communicate with you like how would somebody do that no i i, I think you, you you can't be i think you have to be you know personable yeah good. bottom line you know and, and then they can they can kind of relate to you but I, i've never really had anybody like i mean they'll come right out They'll oh. tell you. I mean, they'll tell you everything. Wow. You know, I mean, I think by the time that they reach me, they're yeah. pretty much at desperation level, right? <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering because, you know, like a lot of people don't want to put their dirty laundry out there, right? Oh, they do. Uh, oh, they do. So they're giving uh, their do- dirty oh, laundry gosh, away. I, yeah, some, some too much. It's, you know, as I said, you become a therapist. Wow. And I'm not kidding. I mean, you do. You kind of have to. And, and, you know, it's easier for us to, to say that and, and do that because we're on the outside. Yes. You know, we're not in their situation. We can look, we're kind of looking in and it's easier for us to kind of, you know, okay, you could, you should do this and you should do that. Yeah. And I think they appreciate that. Um, but I think when it leads into the custody and things like that, it's, it gets, it can get really ugly, yeah. you know, real ugly. Have you, have you ever re- like rejected the case either before you got it or while you're on it saying, nah, this is not right for me. And what, what would be the criteria for that? Or what would cause you to want to not be involved in it well for i mean the criteria first and foremost is anything illegal okay yeah anything i oh. mean we have gps's that we can put on vehicles and stuff but it has to be by the state of california it has to be only vehicle you put it on is to the to the registered owner okay so if it was a, a husband and wife you know and they were going through a divorce and it, the vehicle's in his name you know everything and she's driving it you know then you could put a gps unit on there and follow her around do i do that yeah it's my GPS thing is dusty. Okay. I, I don't use, I mean, I'd rather do surveillance, Got it. Um, but I've been asked, Hey, can you put that on there? And my first question is who's the registered owner Got it. and they have to prove it to me oh. before I'll put it on. I mean, they had to send me the paperwork of, you know, their registration and showing because I mean, that's the first no, no on, on that for me. Is, is there ever an emotional portion where you say, ah, this is not, this is not right for me. Have you ever been in that position? Not that I can think of. I mean, I, I I think I'm a pretty level-headed guy. I mean, I've I've seen my dad being an investigator for so long, being young. I mean, I've seen some things that I probably shouldn't have seen. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's hardened me, but I think it's I'm not really I don't know. I, I'm just that that kind of guy that I'm a very black and white. Yeah, and so it doesn't take a lot away from me. Do, do, do you ever think about like how your dad like was doing this and, and techniques and stuff? Now, oh, now I know why he did that. Yeah, I do. And, I, do. And, I, and I wonder how the heck did they do that when they didn't have technology yeah. like we have? 
I mean, amazing, amazing. You know, you really had to be good. Yeah. You know, and he he's he was a very. I mean, he actually ended up being a criminal investigator. Wow. And he he cracked some cases in Orange County that were in the paper. And I mean, he was really good. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I find it very fascinating, though, just that generational thing, especially the fact that you're doing the same thing to your own family now. I, yeah. I find that, like, very it's funny, amazing. huh? <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't planned, you know, that was, you would have thought, you know. But, yeah, going back, it's funny that when I first started, I mean, we were literally doing, I had to have a, a, a Thomas guide. Yeah. And, I mean, that was so hard. And you're driving, and you're looking at the Thomas guide. Oh, this road, I mean, now it's so easy. We can just put it on our cell phones. Yes. I thought maybe it's a Thomas guy with two holes in there. That's oh, what, yeah, that's I, what I would be thinking. Probably, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's and now it's so much easier. We, we, you know, back in the day, they didn't have you know like the tin windows they have today. Yeah, you know, and, and things like that. I mean, back I think in my dad's era, if you would have had tin windows, they'd have thought cop for sure. Yes, you know, they'd be the only ones with tin windows. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you have a camera mounted? Like, obviously, you have to switch cars, right? Are, are you? Do you have cameras mounted in your cars? I don't. I don't you need don't? to. You, you don't? I, I've thought about it, uh, but I have. I mean, you move around in your car. I mean, okay. You don't want something stationary. I mean, if the guy moves to the left, the guy moves to the right, and they're just going around here, then yeah. you know, it, it's just a regular camcorder. So, so, so obviously, these these long nights and long days, right? And uh, would you say, like, what percentage of time are you sitting there waiting? Like, let's just say, like a a, a twenty four hour day, and you're, you're watching someone. What percentage of time would you just have to be patient and wait? Would you say like that's like eighty percent? I it? couldn't even tell you. It, it, it depends. I mean, uh, I think. Uh, you try and get as much of the information as you can prior. So yeah. you, you're, you're, you're saving your client some time, which is their yeah. money, yeah. you know? And so you're, you, you, when I first have that, it, we set up kind of what I call a game plan. Let's set this game plan up. What are their activity levels? What did, did she, she, you know, if it, we're talking about if it's, I'm following the, the, the wife. Yeah. Does she take the kids to school? At what time do they go to school? Does she pick them up? I mean, what, what is, does she go play tennis at all? Th things like that. So I'm not out there you know, blind, just waiting eight hours and yeah. she doesn't come out until the last hour, Yeah, you know? And so you, you do your best, you, you know? So, so like, even with the case that you did for me, um, like obviously there's some time that I had to wait because you had no idea what time the lady was going to start work and the other company and what she was doing. Like, th what do you do in your waiting period? <laughs> like, what, what, what do you, how do you keep yourself occupied right. without falling asleep? Is it Red Bulls? <laughs> uh, yeah, I did you had Bill, Red Bulls for a long time until they, yeah, it wasn't good on my system. That was bad, bad. Yeah. Um, no, you know, uh, again, when I first started, it was, that was one of the tough things to do is to kind, because you're, I was still fairly young. Yeah. And, it, you know, you, you're, you're. It wasn't snake on your phone like back then when you started? I didn't even have, we didn't, when we first started, we didn't have the cell phone, oh, like the, the phone, smartphones. Right. Yeah, we didn't have smartphones, so it was. You know, it was well that and also i mean you just read a magazine if you if you're on a long case and you're you know or you, i mean but as you get older and you do it more i yeah. mean you just kind of settle in i when i took my son my young son out on a case one time we sat he's like this is so boring dad <laughs> like what do you do and i said you get used to it Wow. Especially as you get older, you want some alone time. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I can imagine. You, you know, and so it is. It is kind of soothing. But the 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 thing about an investigator is that you can almost be at your almost like you're keeping your eyes open, barely barely just keep your eyes open, and all of a sudden, boom, they're out, and you you go from like almost asleep to, to the adrenaline. The adrenaline. Yeah. Yeah. Like you got to get your stuff ready. You got to follow them. You got to be on your game. You know, and so it's. It, Again, it, it it's it gets a little bit. It, it's some getting used to for a while. Yeah, I, I can imagine because you know it's, it's like a form of meditation when you're sitting out there doing nothing in your own head. <laughs> oh, for sure. Right. You, yeah, you're thinking of everything. Like, oh, did I pay the bills uh, this month? And you know what's going on? This you know, dentist appointment on Tuesday. Johnny's, Johnny's got a soccer game this weekend. Am I going to be able to make it? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know those things are. Jolly. I mean, it, it does. It is. I'll tell you. As you get older, I don't know if just because I'm getting real old is that. It's almost therapeutic. Yeah. You know, you sit there and now I'm not that adrenaline rush. It's that, okay, now they're going, let's go. Yeah. You know, and you're kind of like, oh, you know, I think because it's, you already know, I know I've been, I've been doing it for so long now that it's, nothing's really a shock, yeah. you know? So it's like, I don't have to get pumped up. Yeah. So, 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 so like, okay, so like, let's just say, so you're sitting there, so are you ordering food? I, obviously, you, I, I presume you pick it up, have your lunch packed with you. Oh, like, yeah, no, I pick, pack a lunch prior, yeah. Okay. You're, you're, not, not, you're not calling Domino's while you're in the car and having a... Only time, so <laughs> listen, I'll, I'll give you a, little, a quick little rundown, you may not want to, I mean, 
since that we talked about the Red Bull. Well, the Red Bulls were killing my stomach and everything. And were they really? So, yeah, they'd keep me up, and that's great, but, I mean, they're, they're terrible for your system. Yeah. And so every investigator is going to have his jug, and his jug is where he pees. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, every investigator, because the only time that you're going to break off if you got to do a number two. Yes. Because, and there's some guys that have vans, and they'll do that in there, and no thanks. Yeah. No, but... So my mornings consist of me getting up extra early yeah. so I can have my coffee because I'm a coffee guy and not drink yeah. the Red Bulls and be awake and so I can do my business before I even leave. Wow. It's because you don't want to be stuck out there and go, uh-oh, <laughs> it's time. Yes. So what just happened to every, every investigator's gone there. <laughs> so not fun. But you have your jug. Every investigator has yeah. a jug because you've got to stay hydrated. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I could really see, like, it's very um, mentally, mentally challenging on being there by yourself for that long, having to do your business, like you're living in the in the car. For sure. It really is mentally challenging. Yeah. Uh, and, and I could see like how a lot of people would struggle with this. I could really see that. Po yeah, possibly. I, I, it's funny, going back to when I was a kid, you know, I think all boys to a factor, at least mine did, yeah. and me, were, we always wanted to make forts. And I was like, oh, we get in our little fort, and it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, this is cool. They, nobody can really see me. And, yeah. We kind of get that as an adult in our <laughs> it's like, nobody can see me in here this is, you know i'm kind of just chilling i can do whatever i want you know it's kind of it's it's, it's kind of cool you yeah. know but yeah i mean you get used to your car and you try and deck out your car as much as you can for your comforts i, mean, uh, I have two fans well wow. i mean i've yeah you have i have a box of all my stuff wow. you know all my my tools i say what what's the what would you say is the most important besides a camera like what's the most important piece of equipment that you would use your cell phone. Your cell phone? Yeah. Oh, it's like, a, oh. Yeah. I mean, for nowadays, why not? I mean, yeah. that's, it's literally your computer with you. Yes. At all times. Wow. You know, I mean, when I was working, doing back in the day, was, we had laptops, you know, and so you'd have to flip open your laptop and, you know, we had, a, we had internet access, but then you had to log in and yeah. get all your, right now your phone is. The computer. It's your computer. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, besides that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, 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 so people wanting to get into this, right? So mm -hmm. what, what would you tell like somebody who says that this is something that appeals to them? What would you tell them? I, I've been asked this a hundred times. And I, I, I mean, the only thing I can say is you do your due diligence prior, ride along with an investigator, and then get hired on by like a workers' comp company and, and do that and see if this is something that you can do. Yeah. You know, because you'll, you'll be spending a lot of time in your car. You know, and if you're if you're claustrophobic, if you're if you're not into that sitting for a long time, you got a bad back or whatever, this might not be for you. Yeah. You know, not that you couldn't sub it out, but I don't think you want to go in knowing that oh, I'm not going to be doing the work. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm a I, that's the way I do things. I, I actually do work for guys that have never even that own investigative companies and they've never even done surveillance. Oh, they've never done it before. No, They sub it out to us. They wow. sub it out to licensed investigators. Wow. So it's. I would thought that this would be a, something that would appeal to them to want to do it, right? It's the it's the win, it's the chase, it's the the cloak and daggers. It's, it's the money. It's the money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that rule of the world. Um, I mean, why? When you can sub it out and still make money, yeah. you know, that's a lot of them are are kind of ex cops, yeah. you know, which you know, uh, us in the investigative you know industry know that they're they're pretty much the worst. Yeah. Ex cops are bad. Wow. They start off bad because they have everything laid out for them. They can call in and get a full criminal record background on someone. You can't do that. Yeah. You have to use your, your investigative techniques to find out more things, yeah. you know? So, okay. So somebody calling you, what would you advise someone calling you? Like when, when would somebody be looking for your services? So what, what just trying to wrap this up with, the, what would somebody, um, what would you tell someone calling you? Like what, what should they give you? What would they want to explain to you when, when they're calling you? Let's see if I can. If, so you want to know, like, when I answer the call, like, yeah. they say, "Hey, I'm, I'm, my husband's cheating." Yeah. What should they What should they have ready for you when they're calling you? Well, first and foremost, before I, I I'm I am a very detail oriented guy. I I have what we call a fee agreement, and then I have a non disclosure agreement. Okay. I listen to their whole their whole spiel about what they want, and then I can tell them basically what I can what services I can offer, and the price, and then if they agree to it, then I said, listen, I'm going to email you these um, contracts. I want you to sign them, send them back to me, and once we do that, then we'll I, I get a, a, a retainer from them. Okay. 
So it, it, it's very clean cut. And, and I'm, I'm that transparent kind of guy that, you know, you have questions. Don't, I'm not a huge firm. Call me. Hey, I'm not sure about this, you know, or you seem kind of high on your price or, you know, I'm open. I'm not going to necessarily drop my price, but I can tell them, you know, my, my rates are this because of this. And so again, transparency is key for me in, because these people are going to spend a good amount of money. You know, firsthand, Um, you're trusting someone. I mean, this is the first time we've even seen made eyes with each other. We've talked a lot, but so they're trusting you, yes. you know, and they're saying, you know, you, and there's a lot of crooked investigators out there. They just take their money, don't do anything. That's right. And so that's why I, I, I say, hey, look, you know, I understand that this is a total trust issue. Look me up. Go yep. on Facebook, Instagram. Go yep. look up on for my record. You know, you can look, go on the state and, and check my, my license to see if I've had any, any negatives against me and, 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 and do that. I'm open, yep. you know, and that I think opens the door to a lot of trust yes um but but a lot of times to tell you the, the truth uh, i mean in our industry uh, if i don't get the case from another investigator or something i'm getting it from another person that typically is a referral Got it. i mean i do get the ones that are just you know hey you were the closest one but a lot i get a lot of referral Got it. so and, and as i said you know do your research and follow up if this guy's you know shady yeah so very enlightening. I've definitely learned a lot of stuff about PI work. Sure. I mean, I could have gone on forever. I mean, you got it's good because you love what I love what I do. Yes. So you know, and I I, I also do uh, at risk youth transports. That's a whole different ballgame. What ball do you game. mean at youth risk transport? What's so kids that are pretty much jacked up on on drugs and the parents can't handle them. Usually, it's like a single mom. Yeah. And they're trying to get them to a rehab or yeah. you know, an academy or something for, to to change them. They won't go. They're not oh, getting on a plane. Where, where did this, when did you start doing this? I did this when I, I, I kind of branched out from, I had an investigator that I did work for and she asked me and she did it on the side too. Hey, do you want to do this? And I said, yeah. So I've been all over the United States. Wow. Almost every state I've been in now because of it. So, so this was, okay. So, so with this, you were actually helping kids get into cor- correction. Yeah. Mode. I mean, I've, we, you go to the house early morning, they have it set up and the parents, you know, cause they, they can't control their kid. We come in. Um, there's one other guy that a couple other guys that did were fairly big dudes. Yeah. And we go in, we got cuffs and we just explained it to him. Hey, your parents are sending you, you know, to this facility, you need to go. And they'll, they're going to bitch moan and everything and, and everything. And we've had fighters. They've tried to fight us. Um, well, yeah. So, okay. So, so, okay. So, so, okay. So this is something very new then. Right. I, I didn't realize you did this too. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We could have just <laughs> sorry, this, yeah I'm open. So, 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 okay. So, so with this, okay. So, okay. So, so what, what do you call this? It's called at risk youth transport. Oh, at risk youth transport. Okay. Yeah. So like if a, if a kid is bad and a parent is having a hard time with it, they would call in a, a company. Right. To come and take them to, and where are they taking them? They're taking some uh, to rehabs or, you know, the uh, different military academies or s- something like that for some uh, group homes. Not, I, know, I can't remember the terms, but there's all these facilities that offer, you obviously have to pay, but you, you send your kid there for a month and they're kind of, um, God, what was it? What was there? They're all over there. They're all over. Okay. So, 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 okay. So, so you guys go in there, you, you, you would grab, you would get the kids, tell them that, Hey, we're going to take you away. But the hand, so you handcuff them, put them in the back of the car, and then you would just drop them off and. Well, yeah, I mean, there's more to it than just because we're trying not to. Now they are they are kids. Yeah, I mean, anywhere from what, I think what age? It, probably I think it's eight to seventeen. Eight to seventeen. Yeah. Wow, that's young. Yeah, and I. Well, it's, it's it's definitely young. And and obviously you have to have again you have to have some type of compassion with you. You can't just go in and put an eight year old in cuffs, you're going to damage him, you know, mentally he's, you know, so you go in and say, your parents are sending you here. They've, the parents has already signed off that you get temporary custody of that child. So they're in your care and your responsibility. And so a lot of them, you have to, sometimes you drive, sometimes you get on a plane. And so we explain to them, Hey, your bag's already been packed by your parents. You're kind of come with us. You know, we introduce ourselves. Hey, we're not here to, to hurt you or anything. We're just trying to get you there. We explain it to them. And remember that some of the kids are younger, but some of the kids aren't as young, and they're still on drugs. 
Well, we, we picked up kid in San Antonio that was, we lo- we walked up on him on his front porch at, it was almost five o'clock in the morning, completely dark out, and he was smoking a crack pipe. Wow. A white kid. Wow. And he wanted to fight. And me and my partner, I mean, I'm, I'm six, almost six one, two seventy. 270. My partner's bigger than me. Yeah. He, and, and we know how to handle him. Yeah. So we try and handle him with care. And we say, listen, we don't want to fight. You know, hey, you're going to go with us. You, you have to. So he kind of started swinging. And before we know, we got him, we got him in cuffs. And then we trying to walk him and he won't walk. And he's making up all the neighbors. And so we had to, we had to put him in, in, in leg restraints as well. And, and this is pretty hard to see, right? Seeing somebody on obviously drugs and uh, being in that position must be extremely emotional, like taking a, a Again, you have to be, yeah. I mean, you got to be strong-minded. I mean, you have to r- really weigh that this is the good for the kid. Wow. You know, I mean, I, I mean I, I've had the most extremes of them where I've, I've taken kids that were, well, one of the kids, we, we had a contract one time for uh, up in Sacramento County. And we were picking up kids from juvenile hall yeah. and then taking them to a facility so they could learn life lessons, you know, and things like that. And I mean, these kids that I was picking up, they had armed robbery. They've been, they've shot people. I don't think any we got that ever killed anybody, but they shot one kid we picked up. He stole a car, was on a hundred mile an hour, uh, police chase, got out of the car ran over the freeway, almost got hit. The only way they got him was from a dog, a, a police dog. And so, in the, and these kids, you know, they're in the inner city. And here, you know, these, these white guys are coming up and they're like, I don't identify with you. You know, you, yeah. you, know, you don't know what I've been through. So you're trying to, you know, accommodate them with, without being... A threat or... Right, exactly, yeah, like because, a threat. You know, yeah. like, I, I'm not here to, to, to... I'm just here to get you to here to here and just make sure you're safe. Um, so... So okay, so so with this right, so so you're you're going to them, you're grabbing the kids, you're taking them to these locations, and and now when you're getting them there, uh, the the kids are probably fighting and screaming all the way till where you're taking them, right? It depends, you know, I'll, I'll, it depends on the kid. I mean, I, I would probably say ninety percent of the time, if not higher, they become my friends. Yeah, you know, not friends, friends, but they be, we become friends because you're, you're you're talking. Hey, what's what's your deal? I'm I'm that kind of guy. You know, hey, what's your deal? Why, why, why are you messing up like that? You know, why are you doing the drugs, dude? Because I've been there. What, what, what do you think is the like catalyst to to see a kid in that position? Is it someone not paying attention to them? Is it this the neighborhoods? Is it the uh, the crowd? Like, what what causes this? I think all in, all, all encompassed, but I think um, I think parenting one hundred and one. I mean, bar none. I mean, I my kid is probably he he hates me sometimes because I'm in his business. Yeah. But you know, he's fifteen, and I know that you know he's never done drugs yeah. doesn't want to do them doesn't i mean he's been we just recently he's been close to it and yeah. so i think you got to be in your kids lives and you know do you think the the poverty level has has a, 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 a for reason sure for this? like obviously going into a pacific neighborhood because obviously when you're picking up these kids is it a pacific neighborhood or are you going to upper scale neighborhoods too we do everything you do everything. I've done. I've been in people that dra- uh, taking dragon kids out of a mansion, wow. and I've been in the ghetto. Like they did barely a one a one bedroom apartment, and they got like ten people in there. Wow. Yeah. It, it, it's it's the ones that I've actually taken guys that was a kid specifically, and he'll I'll, he'll be in my mind for the rest of my life. He was a great kid. He was in Texas. He called me sir every sentence, and he had already been in three of the military academies. And so what the situation was is that he, we picked him up and he was very nice. He got into the car. We talked to him about his situation. He's never done drugs, never even smoked a cigarette, never did anything, never drank anything. I don't remember. He was, oh gosh, I can't remember. I think he was 14. Oh, yeah. And he'd already been, if 14 by 14, he'd already been in three of the, the other academies been sent away and so his mom had it was a single mom but she met this guy and the new husband yeah. the stepdad didn't like him didn't like him no. and he was a precious kid so we were finally sending him to the to the final academy and um he was he was just heartfelt and i said you know we were talking to the mom and she said who well, said how long you know we got in there safe how long do you think he's gonna be there and she said four years wow until he's 18. Wow. He had never, he got good grades. He was a straight A student. 
And I don't think he was lying to us because he was just one of those kids that was a nice, nice kid. Yeah. The, me and my partner were literally calling our wives like in tears. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's saying, is there a way that we can adopt this kid? You know, so those are the things. And it was that just really, something simple that that put him off the wrong track. Just no, it was the 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 stepdad didn't want him around. Oh, okay. Bottom line, this was one of the nicest kids I've ever met in my entire life, and I can say that. And I and we walked out. We drove out of there with little tears in our eyes. Wow. And I and both my partner and not even knowing what we knew, I called my wife, and he called his, and I just said, "Is there any way we can adopt him?" I said, "My wife said, yeah, just do whatever you got to do, bring him home." And obviously we couldn't, we were acting in the moment, but it was heart wrenching that this kid is never, he just wanted love. Wow. You know, it's tough. It's tough. And then I just said, you know, I got guys that I gotta, I gotta make sure they're handcuffed because they'll stab me in a heartbeat, you know, to get away. Wow. So you deal with that, that level, you know. So so when they're taking them to these military academies or where where they're taking them, is it is it like a like a like a somewhat pri- not a prison but I don't know how you would describe for sure it. Is, is that what it is they teach them the military and yeah you're it's a boarding school or and, and that is know. to then send them into combat like what wh- where does that go after no that? It, it, uh, it's, it's they're teaching a military military style uh, um, discipline yeah I mean they just want them to learn you know how to make their bed correctly and and they're just strict. And so, you know, if they go into the military, then they, they know what to expect. It's not, it's not a, an entry into the military. It's, it's just a, a reformer, you know, school. You, you, you know, seeing some of the um, things that you've seen, obviously from the, the PI work to this, it, it makes you lose a little faith sometimes in humanity, right? It, it sure does, can, yeah. It, it hurts, for like sh- you see what people go through. For sure. I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I'm, a, I'm a kid. I, I, I love kids. Love yeah. kids. I, I think kids aren't born bad. I think they're they're they grow into that. I mean, I don't think they come out of the womb bad. So for me to see these things, I want to take them all in. Oh. You know, and, and and hey, you know what? You need a little discipline. Fine, let's get you on the right path. You know, but they're they're good kids. Yeah. You know, and if they're doing drugs or whatever, there's a there's typically a reason. You know, a mom doesn't give me any attention. Dad doesn't care about me. You know, those things like that. And it's yeah. it's. That is much more of a uh, a mental job for me than the, the investigations, wow. because you're right there. You're, I mean, I've flown on planes with kids, and they've told me their entire life story. Are, are you still involved in this portion of it today? I haven't been. No, um, I've been f- focusing more on the investigations, and it gets rough. Yeah. You know, you get to a point where you're like, I kind of need a break. Yeah. Because I mean, as I said, you, you kind of want to take every kid home. Yeah, because there's so much negative stuff coming out of this. You got it. That, you know, like how much can someone take? Right. Really, like really, you need a vacation from right, that. Right, right. It's almost like you want to buy a big big farm and just go, let's go. Come on. Yeah. You know, but I mean, in reality, they, they, they need it. Some of them need it. Some of them just, they need love and they need someone to care for them. And you wonder why people even have kids if you're going to treat them that way. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, wow. that's, that, it's, it's unfortunate. So real quick, I'll tell you the kid that, that we picked up on drugs um, that he was smoking the, the crack pipe. Yeah. He was so high that you can't fly with a kid that is going to be, you know, disturbance. Right. And so we tell them that, Hey, if you, if you act up, they're not going to, they're going to put you on the no fly and y- you'll never be able to be on a plane, you know, ever if you yeah. act up really bad and he's, ah, you know, F and this F and that. And so we had to make the decision. Okay. So he was high as heck. We drove from San Antonio to Spokane, Washington, straight. Was it like 20 hours? It was 44 hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And we had to go through snowstorms, everything. And we just rotated. We rotated driving. And the kid, with luck, we had a, a huge suburban. He sat in the back. We, cu- we had him cuffed. And he would just pass out for a while. And he'd wake up and he'd start screaming and yelling. Wow, that's that's intense. Yeah, it was it was bad. That's intense. Yeah, he was he was the most intense one that we've had, you know. How, how long did you do this for? Well, about two years. About two years. Wow, it was not longer. Yeah. So is, is is it something that you would ever go back into, or would you ever try to, at some point in your life, want to create something to help kids? Like, do it? I'd love I'd love to do something to create f- something for kids. Again, I, I think that this world is so tough for kids. I can't. It's it's a lot tougher than when I grew up. Yeah. And I and I, I didn't grow. I grew up in in South Orange County. You know, they all think we're rich. Well, we were definitely not rich. And I got into a lot of trouble. And I saw the dark depths of of bad 
things, doing bad things. And, and so uh, I think that being said is that I didn't really have anybody that like said, dude, no, uh-uh. This is where to go. It, 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 you know, it's a, it's a hard world for adults, but kids transitioning into that hard world that we're in as adults too, right? Brains are still forming. They, they're trying to make, you know, adult decisions now. Yes. And that's the scary thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you wonder why this, there is a lot of chaos. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And it, 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 as you, it's heartbreaking because it's, it's preventable. I think if you roll with the times and you've got to be, we always say you got to be present. Yeah. You do with your kids and, and with your, and with anybody that you care about, you, you can't just disconnect like, and that's so much of what's going on these days. Wow. Was there any other jobs that you've done that you didn't disclose? Oh, <laughs> because wow, that one, that one was kind of intense. Yeah. I mean, I've had, I've, I had a, a case where it was lo- local here and it was run by a so-called pastor Yeah, and he was married. Yeah. Well, we've got the feeling that we, so we picked up one of the girls. She was very reluctant. She was smoking pot. And so we sent her all the way in the middle of nowhere. And I think it was, it was either Nevada or Utah. Yeah. And when I say in the middle of nowhere, I mean their closest town or anything was over an hour, an hour away. And it was just a farmhouse where they, and so we dropped her off there. And then she was such a great girl. I mean, she comes from, her parents were heroin addicts. So she wasn't into that, but she was smoking pot. And so she, but she's seeing it, right? Yeah. And so this, 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 this pastor and his wife, they foster these kids. And so we went back to pick up her younger sister about a year later and then dropped her off. And we just got this weird feeling. And I, I know this is an accusation, but I got a feeling this guy was not doing it for the kids. Your intuition was kicking up and saying, yep. man, there's something he, wrong. And same with my buddy. And it was, no, this guy's not doing it. He acted like, he didn't act like he superiorly cared about her, either one of them. And, you know, it was. I think it was a lot about the money because they get money that, to, to foster these kids. Yeah, and that's why you see some They were in one room. There were like five kids. And it was in a fairly big room. Yeah. But they didn't have any of their own. I mean, they're in bunk beds. Yeah. And they're all teenage girls. And so we just, you, you know, I just, just got a bad feeling. And then the second one told us the same thing. She said, the younger daughter, the younger sister said, yeah, he's doing it. He doesn't care about us. Yeah. You know? You, you know, I've seen someone uh, fostering um, actually here, here in Southern California. And, and I know it's like twelve or $1,500 per child. Oh, yeah. And, and so if you're sticking 10 children uh, into a, a house or a room, there you go. There's ten grand a month minimum that you're getting for right. putting food on the table, and there's your job. Right. And, and, and you're right. The love is not there, but they're doing it obviously for the money. Right. Um, Which just disgusts me. Yeah. It's, it, it really disgusts me. Yeah. You know. And you know, we, we it was a it was a. So when we have when we had um, if we ever did a a, a girl, um, there always had to be our, the other the other agent had to be. A female, yes. Just because I mean, we got to go in yeah, the bathroom. Just in case, right. I mean, we've had to stop and you know, at, we've dri- driven and we had to stop at a gas station to go to the bathroom, and you have to go in the stall. I mean, you, you don't go into the stall with them, but you, you you're right there next to it. Yeah, closed door, but so yeah, and but I mean, it was awkward for them because when I walked in, I mean, she was basically in nothing. I mean, she had her underwear on, and so I mean, I'm trying to assess a situation where I, I can't let her leave, but I can't, I can't, I mean, she's a young girl. I can't turn around and look, you know, so I had my agent and she was new. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of a, it's a tit. And, and, and then you're putting yourself in a situation where, you know, I mean, what is she going to say during the, during the ride? Oh, he, yeah. if she could say anything she wants about me, you know, he, he said this to me, he said that. And it's like, you know, their word against ours. So you really kind of got to, Assess it, as he said. You have yeah. to assess what you're getting into, and always be open and transparent. You know, and have your obviously the female agent be more of the lead yeah. when it's a female, and it's and and then vice versa with the boys. Wow, this thing is um, really pretty intense. Like, it's the most intense job I've ever been in, ever. Even over in, even over investigations, because it's dealing with kids and emotions, and you know, drug use, and you know history of uh, of family problems you you would hope that the 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 government would assist more in trying to put money into programs to to help these type of situations 
Yeah, I mean, what what can the government do? I mean, ultimately, I, I get what you're saying, but ultimately, that comes down to the parents. Yeah, I mean, even it, my mom was a single mom for for a while, and I mean, I feel that she raised did the best she she could for me, you know. So you always have to every decision that you make is going to influence someone, especially if you have kids. You making a decision, it's going to affect your kids, and you you got to. Yeah. Think of that before you you do. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, I was thinking that maybe the government would actually create a, a program or something that's going to help better financially than just to give money to people who are just trying to shove people into a house or kids into a house, yeah. and maybe be a little more creative on their program sure. versus just just throwing money into a pot. Right. That's why I, I would have yeah. hoped. Yeah. You know that they invest in so much junk or stuff that's so useless, I agree. And, and it's just like throwing money at a problem, but it's really going down the down the toilet. Right. Right. I agree. It's hard. It, it's a it's it's a slippery slope. Um, I mean, and there's just, you know, people are going to take advantage of the situation yeah. as well. I mean, that's, they always that's do. A, they always, always, do. always going to be someone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that's where I think that in life that we have to raise our kids with morals. You know, regardless if you if you have a religion or, or not in your life, that's I think right. having the, the basic family morals yes. and installing that early is, is very important. It just makes better humans. Yeah. You know, bottom line. Wow. Yeah, that was... Uh... So, so, so with the you, 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 so you are out of this now, right? So you're not involved in this anymore. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I can, I could jump back in if but I it's need. It's heart wrenching. It is, you know. I mean, I, 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 I started to open up my own company doing it, and wow. I found myself really getting down that hole of, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sustain this. Yeah. You know, only because, I mean, it is, even if I'm not the agent on scene, it's, you still know the story and you get really emotionally involved. Yeah. How can you not? Yeah. It's much different than an investigator because your investigator, you're kind of observing from a distance where this is your hands on, you know, I'm literally, I have handed out my business card to, I don't, I, I'm team kids to say, you know, when you're done here and if you're in a, in, in a dark place or you need a ride or you're in a bad situation, call me, wow. you know, because it's just, that's, I don't know if they're going to get the, the care they need, you know, and I, I love kids. Yeah. You so know, you don't know what's going to happen. So it's those times. That's what I'm saying is that it's, it's so much that you invested. I'm I, it's beyond just taking them to that, that facility. I mean, during that whole time, it is so emotional. And then afterwards it's like draining because you're just like, you know, and yeah. it's obviously not every single one, but the vast majority are. Wow. You know? Yeah. No. 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 I, I mean, that that for me would really uh, affect me emotionally. I, I couldn't even imagine. Yeah. Doing that, I don't think I, I would even be tough enough to handle. I guess that. it's kind of a hate and love hate situation because you love to do it to help them, but help them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you hate the aftermath the because you're just getting, yeah the emotion just kicks in yeah. and it's hard. Yeah. Wow. You know. Well. Casey, I w again, I want to thank you. Um, no problem. Yeah, I, I appreciate you doing this. I appreciate you sharing these stories. And, you know, no problem, like no. I, I, I value what you've done for me. I value what you've done appreciate for those it. kids. And, um, I mean, you, you've helped me a lot over the, the past four, four, four years, I think it's been now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anytime. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Casey. We're going to put your details up in case anybody's looking for services. Sure, that'd know, be great. Yeah, anytime. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow.